got four magicians backstage ready to show us some of the best tricks in the world. The only thing missing are the stars of our show, magic legends, Penn and Teller. <laughs> Teller pony up one of their fancy fool us trophies and a slot in their Vegas show to any magician who fools them. Here's our first act of the night. Some people run a family business. I am a family business. My dad makes props that are unique to my act. Thanks, Dad. My mom sews many of my outfits. Thanks, Mom. When your parents work with you, the added ingredient is love. Korean magicians are ambitious and competitive, but they also show uncommon support for each other. We exchange tips and try to improve each other's magic. The way I stand out is with humor. I want to be Jim Carrey plus magic because I hope to fool Penn and Teller. And it's hard to figure out someone else's magic while you're laughing at their jokes. I hope the last laugh will be mine. Please welcome Korean conjurer Kim Moon Do. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Brooke. Thank you for having yes. me. Today, I'm going to show you guys a card trick. <sighs> the first effect is finding four aces. Let me shuffle the deck first. Okay. Watch carefully. Oh, the first ace is here. Ah. Oh, do you see this arrow card? I do. Yeah, this arrow card will help me whenever I make a mistake. Okay. Okay. Next, second, and. Third, the last. Ah. Ace of space. <laughs> ah. It's an interesting card, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. From now, I will put this arrow card in my pocket right here. Everyone can see it. Anyway, I got four aces. Uh, Brooke, can you? Take a card, please. Sure. And shuffle the card. Just shuffle, please. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. How's that? Yeah. Is that good? Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And over four aces, please touch any card. This one. This card. Check it and show to everyone, please. And I brought something. This is a wallet. Okay. Empty wallet. Empty wallet. Uh, I'm broke. Um, <laughs> Vegas got me good. Um, <laughs> the left is Ace of Diamond. Clubs. Hearts. Oh, you picked Ace of Spades, right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Because you picked the Ace of Spades, I will find all spades from the deck. Watch. Ace, two, <gasps> three, four, oh, five, five, five is here, <laughs> six, and sh sh seven, wow, eight, that is all I can do. So I use this arrow card to find the nine of spades. No way. <laughs> Look at this arrow card. It's done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the other three aces in my wallet and put it away. And again, I will put this arrow card in my pocket right here. <laughs> no switch, no switch. Okay, almost three more to go. Okay. 
I put three pile, and I hope this is Jack Queen King. <sighs> uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Jack of Spades is somewhere in the middle. <laughs> oh wait. Ace. Another ace. Oh, these three aces should be in what's in my wallet. Of course. Watch. Jack of Spades. Queen of Spades. The last King of Spades. Um, what? Arrow card was here. Oh, yes. There we go. I found the King of Spades. Thank you. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Bru. Yes. You shuffled the deck before, right? I did. Look. Everything is in order is ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. This card is all down on the ace to king like this. Uh huh. Of course, the last card is all heart. Thirteen card. Right there. <laughs> So much fun to see that up close. Thank you very much. Thank you for letting me participate. <laughs> it was very fun for me as well. And how long does it take you to practice an act like this? Because your hand movement was so fast. It was really incredible to watch. Uh, wow, eight years. That's amazing. <laughs> And, and how important is humor to your to your magic? 네, 제가 제 손기술이 들어간 마술을 좋아하는데 제가 또 개인적으로 어, 좀 코미디 영화를 좋아해서 중간에 코믹적인 요소를 집어넣어서 이렇게 만들게 되었습니다. Well, I think you did. You did just that. <웃음> All right, Kamun. Let's see if your magical misdirection will earn you a fool us trophy. Let's check in with Penn and Teller. Ah, oh, come on. Uh, you know, just when you think there's nothing more that can be done with cards, uh, you're, doing, you're doing so many, so many different things. And some of the stuff were effects that other magicians do, but bringing the arrow in is just a brilliant thing. And stuff we we're watching really closely, I've got to tell you, even if we thought we followed things here and there, your execution was so perfect. And that really matters, you know? There wasn't a moment of sloppiness. Everything was crystal clear. Everything was natural. Every move was perfect. But I have to ask you, this is a big but, I have to ask you one thing. Do you have that arrow card with you up there? Could you, could you pull out the arrow card, please? This one? Yeah, yeah, please. Now take that arrow and just tilt it toward Brooke a little bit. Not quite so much, a little less, a little, little, little more, a little more, a little more, because that's where your trophy is coming from. <laughs> Continue to sweat it out when we come back. <laughs> Welcome back. Our next magician really puts the fool in fool us. Take a look. Hey, fun fact there's a whole bunch of Mad Donnellys on this planet. 
There are a lot of people named Matt Donnelly out there, and I had to do something to stand out, both to humans and internet searches. So I became Matt the Mind Noodler. Noodling is a disgusting form of fishing, but it's kind of rugged and outdoorsy and blue collar. That's kind of my approach to magic. This is my second time on Fool Us. They're right over there. I can read Penn's mind. He's thinking, what the hell's Matt doing up there? <laughs> Let's just get out of the way. I didn't fool them. If you think you fooled us, I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> I co-host three podcasts, which is two too many. But the one you care about is the one I do with Penn. So it is hard to keep secrets from them. But hey, I did it. Penn and Teller have no idea what's in store for them tonight. So tonight, not only am I going to surprise them, I'm going to noodle their minds. Put your hands together for the comedy magic of Matt, the Mind Noodler. Thank you all so much. But tonight is not about comedy. It is not about magic. It is not about entertainment. It is about redemption. That's right. I plan to redeem my family's greatest shame. In 1991, at the Ham Days Festival in Lebanon, Kentucky, my uncle, working as a Secret Service agent, failed to place himself between then Vice President Dan Quayle and an active shooter. Now, a lot of you are thinking right away, Dan Quayle was never shot. Not by a gun, no, but by a T-shirt cannon. And so with your permission, I would like to reenact that scenario and restore honor to my family. Is that okay with you guys? Yes. We don't know much about the shooter, but we do know he was from Western Massachusetts and six foot six. Does anyone fit that description here in the audience today? Oh, Penn. Oh, I wasn't even thinking of that. Oh, great. Yeah, come on up. Yeah. Come, come on. I'm from Greenfield, Massachusetts. Greenfield, Mass. Yeah. yeah. Is that, that's West. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Penn, uh, you're going to help out with this trick, so grab any color marker you want. You're going to put your mark on this, on this T-shirt, okay? I will. Great. Happy with the orange? I am happy with Great. the Great. Go ahead and draw it on. Make a nice, distinct... On that T-shirt. Right here. This is your canvas. And you know what? To make it even more distinct for the people all, all seeing it in the theater here, just grab another color and throw another color on here and do okay, something else with it. Okay, okay. <clears throat> oh, this is getting very Woodstock. Yes. This is perfect. <laughs> you know, the peace sign stands for nuclear disarmament. Did you know that? I didn't in know that. It's a semaphore. Wow. Yeah, that's what it is. Awesome. Thank if you. If you haven't got a joke, a fact is second best. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Now, uh, we don't know much about Dan Quayle, except that he looked exactly like Teller. Does anyone in the audience fit that description? <laughs> he looks oh, like Teller. Teller. Perfect. Come on up here, Teller. Come on up here, tell her, just take your mark right there. Uh, Penn, have you ever fired a t-shirt cannon in your life? No, I never have. Well, today's your lucky day, buddy. Okay. All right, let's bring out the t-shirt cannon. Oh, jeez. Yeah, this is the hand cannon. This is the exact don't, replica don't. of the weapon used that day in 1991. Okay. All right? Yeah. Uh. It is cumbersome, but I promise you, in 1991, this was peak t-shirt technology. Wow, it is very cumbersome. <laughs> So now we're gonna get your shirt stuffed in here. Okay. Make sure it's super tight that it fires. Okay. I will now uh, arm the cannon. It's now armed. It is. Okay. Now tell her, your job is to get shot. <laughs> Just go ahead and take the place right there. Oh, and I almost forgot. Uh, I want to make sure we do it under test conditions. Okay. And it was raining that day. Oh, jeez. So, Brooke, do you mind coming over and playing the part of the rain? I don't know if I want to take part in this, but yes, I will help you out. Okay. I'm going to be go. the rainmaker? Yeah, you can make the rainmaker and do a little over here and over here. Okay. Like that. Now, Brooke, <laughs> have you ever made it rain on female performers before? I have not. Okay. Well, today's pretty awesome. First time for so everything. So just give a little sort show. there. Okay. You're doing an excellent job. And then, great. And just to make sure we do this right, I'll get uh, three brain coats for us. 
Uh, Penn, you get to put that down for a second. I'll give you a rain cut. I put this down now? Yeah. That means picking it up again. It does. <laughs> I hate this thing. And it's arms. Yeah, yeah. Just go ahead and just put your raincoat on. Tell okay. me put your raincoat on. Does it have arms in it already? Uh, no, it's a Kentucky raincoat. You make your own holes. And you need help? <laughs> yeah, there are people who say, I can't act my way out of a paper bag. Okay. The there. I hate this. Good. And then, uh, Teller, I couldn't get the TV rights to show the presidential medal, um, so you just have this. Here, here's the medal. All right. So, Brooke, take one step back. Okay. All right. You're going to make it rain. Okay. I'm going to yell potato, and you're going to fire. Okay. Ready? Yes. Brooke, yes. make it rain. Yes. Ben. Yes. Potato! Oh no. Even when you know your history, you're destined to repeat it. All right. Um, Tell her, can you grab the t shirt there? And that doesn't look like the shirt you signed, though, does it? No, it was a different color than that. Well, that's weird. Then maybe, maybe I. Maybe I. Maybe I caught the shot. We did it! I am redeemed! Thank you so much. Thank you, Teller. That's a mind mover, everyone. Matt, your family's honor is restored. (laughs) How are you going to travel with this thing when you take it on the road? Um, I don't know. I think I'll buy a plane ticket for the Canada and I'll check myself. They say that magic is hard. Comedy yeah. is hard. Yeah. Is comedy magic extra hard? It is because I think like once you make an audience laugh too hard, they don't want to give you credit for magic. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you don't get a lot of like I don't get a lot of gasps and <gasps> and and no one cries at my show. But how much fun is it to laugh? I mean, belly laughs, Matt. Oh, thanks. Well, you've redeemed your family's honor. Now let's see if you fooled Penn and Teller. Are you ready, Matt? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna hold your hand for this one. <laughs> Are you on the edge of your seat, Matt? Uh, Very much. Matt's one of our best friends, one of my best friends. We've been friends forever. And Matt Donnelly is very unusual in magic. He may be the only one that has this quality. Everybody in magic starts out as a child, learning magic, and then clumsily learns to be funny, learns to perform on stage. Matt Donnelly in the New York... Uh, improv scene was one of the superstars. Matt Donnelly is funny. So we've known for a long time that Matt Donnelly, the mind noodler, was going to be a wonderful, wonderful act. Now, let's get to where we try to figure out your trick. (laughs) First of all, I see you every day. I don't think there's a day I haven't seen you in years. And yet, you kept this trick from us. We didn't know anything about it for all that time. And in that way, Matt Donnelly, you fooled us. And you get a souvenir t-shirt that I made especially for you. So, in keeping the trick from us, you actually fooled us. In terms of the trophy, get the hell off the stage! Get off the stage! Get out of here! I am taking my cannon and I'm going home. Matt Donnelly! We can't go home, we still need you, Matt. (laughs) Matt the Mind Miller, everyone. Not nice, boy. Not nice at all. Do you want to see more magic tricks? Well, we've got a few more for you when we come back. Welcome back. Penn and Teller gave away a trophy earlier tonight. Let's see if they've got another one in them as they face our next magician. Hi, I'm Brielle. I grew up in a small town in West Virginia. 
I'm not new to performing, but I'm relatively new to magic. I discovered magic while substitute teaching. Another sub had amazing command over his classrooms. He started and ended each class with a magic trick. Magic is a great tool to connect with people. Even with a master's degree in clinical psychology and my performing background, I've had to overcome stage fright. My friends have played a big part in helping me become a performer. One of them even rented out a theater for me as a gift. I was terrified to get on the stage, but I don't back down from a challenge. Magic is hard. It brings my interest in psychology and performance together. It's not like I'm not afraid, I just do it anyway. Truly an honor to share the stage with you, Penn and Teller. It's no secret that I am a big fan of both of you, and Brooke, you too, of Thank course. You. And being the super fan that I am, I have a huge collection of Penn and Teller memorabilia, and I brought a few of those items with me today. Oh my goodness. <laughs> A bullet fired from a Colt Python 357 Magnum magic wand from a show in February 2002. A perfectly ordinary deck of cards signed by Penn and Teller. And finally, a set of Penn and Teller's very own clear cups and an aluminum ball that I paid a ridiculous amount for online. <laughs> that I could have easily made myself at home. But this one was actually touched on stage by Penn and Teller. How cool is that? Yeah. <laughs> And I'm going to stand over here and turn my back, and you're going to make some very important, completely secret for me decisions, okay? Okay. Great. Penn, I want you to decide on an item for yourself. So look at the three items in the case. In fact, pass your hand over them. Perhaps you feel drawn to one in particular. Mm -hmm. Decide on one. Yep. Take it out of the case now. Mm -hmm. Show it to the camera and keep it for yourself. Okay. Now, let's get Brooke and Teller involved now, too. So there are two items remaining in the case. I want you to decide on one. Teller, take that item out of the case now. Show it to the camera. Great. Now there is one item left, so take it out of the case, show it to the camera, and hand it to Brooke. Does she have one? Thank you. I do. Yes, she does. <laughs> okay. Now, Penn, I'm going to turn back around, but before I do, please close the case. And everyone take the item that you're holding and put it behind your back so that I can't see it. Pen. Yes. You first chose to keep an item for yourself. And I'm not sure if you realized it, but the bullet kind of looks like a little number one. And I think that that influenced you. Did you choose to keep the bullet for yourself? Yes, I did. Can you show it to us, please? Yes, I will. <laughs> and who chose the second item? Tell her. Interesting. I think Teller chose cups and ball because famously you performed this trick twice. Once with a clear set of cups and once with an opaque set of cups. Can you show it to us, please? And Penn, of course, that would mean that you saved the deck for third and you gave it to Brooke, which makes sense because if you look at the back of that perfectly ordinary deck of cards, you'll find that your favorite card is marked the three of clubs. Brooke, please show us the deck of cards. For those of you keeping score, I correctly guessed the locations of all three of those items. And not only that, but I told you why Penn was influenced to make those decisions. But after having explained all of that, you probably think it's a bunch of who nanny. Or Penn, as you would probably like to call it, bull****. <laughs> But I wasn't guessing. In fact, I knew what choices you were going to make. You kept the bullet for yourself, you gave the cups to Teller, and you gave the deck to Brooke. And before coming here, I printed a prediction on this luggage tag that has remained in plain sight the entire time. Penn, could you take that tag, open it up, slide out the prediction, and read it out loud for everyone? My prediction. Penn Gillette will have the bullet, Teller will end up with the cups, Finally, Brooke will have the deck. Can you slide that up for me, please? And now I can finally add this to my collection as well. Thank you, Brielle, everyone. So, in 
this is sick. You said you were new to magic, but we would never know it by this performance. How long have you been a Penn and Teller fan? I, I remember watching them from a very young age. So, so this, this has is to be extra surreal. Unreal. Yeah, I. No words. <laughs> so, what is the hardest part about being a magician? When I talk about being a magician, I am just overcome with joy that I found something that fits who I am. Of course, there are hard parts to anything, like the stage fright or um, you know, deciding what type of magic fits my voice, but I just love it. It's, it's hard. It is hard sometimes, but it's worth being brave for and yeah. working hard for. All right, Brielle, <laughs> let's see if you can add a Fool Us trophy to your memorabilia collection. That would let's be cool. see if the boys are ready. <laughs> Ah, Brielle, we were so taken by the fact that you opened that case and had that real uh, memorabilia. And that really uh, means a lot that you, that you had those. It's a beautiful thing in the case. Wonderful, wonderful performance. And we really enjoyed it with your case there and, and the tag and everything. And uh, it is, as you know, uh, the first season that we have Brooke here. And Brooke, did they give you the safety briefing? There's supposed to be a safety briefing, Brooke, that you get here. Guys, if there I were, didn't get a safety briefing. If there were to be an emergency, and this, it's very unlikely, it's a very safe building, but you are on stage and you're the one in authority. She's supposed to have the safety uh, feature so you can point out the outs if someone's in trouble. Nobody they, told no, me that. No one told you? I'm sorry, Brielle, we got off the <laughs> subject here. But that's really important. That That's your job, or a small part of your job. Are you but it's not to your, torture? <laughs> it's not your job. So that's someone's fault they didn't point out all the outs to you. But I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bill. We wanted to get back to your trick. But that's that's really important that you uh, that you know I'll that. Get on uh, I'll get on we know that. Them. But sorry. Brielle, it was a fabulous, fabulous trick. And we really <laughs> loved it. But I think I might have slipped something in there to show you that we don't think that you fooled us. I don't think I fooled you. Thank you. It was an absolute honor. Oh, you're so oh, good. Brielle, everyone. Play more foolers on the way, and later they perform a trick of their own. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Fool Us, everyone. Here comes our next fabulous magician. I am Bruno Tarnecci, and I am in love. I entered circus school when I was 12. Riding a unicycle and juggling were just crushes. But magic, that was love. By 21, it was mutual. I won the grand prize for magic in Latin America. If my home of Peru is the rhythm and flow of my performance, being that objects are my magical partners. Like a cane I saw in the window of an antique shop. I knew I had to have it in my life, but I didn't know why. Until one day, it called out to me. Hey, here I am. Let's do something. Tonight, that very same cane will be my accomplice. Penn, tell her, I hope you enjoy our magic duet.
Hachi, everyone. Tell me about the cave. Well, I was uh, in Lima, Peru, walking on the street, and I saw an antique store, a vintage store. So I saw the cane over there, and I fell in love. And then I started realizing that I can, I can create my own dancing cane routine. Is there a story in your performance that you could share with us? Well, I'm from Lima, I'm from the coast. So I, I'm always in relationship with, uh, in relation with the water. So how it moves the cane and how the cane floats is like to be in, in the water, something like that. Okay, Bruno, I hope your magical cane is a mystery to the boys. Let's find out. Boys? Well, Bruno, you were sure raising cane up there. Um, <laughs> what a... <laughs> <laughs> what, a what a great routine. Um, and, you know, Teller is a real expert at animation of stuff. Teller's done three major tricks over the years that do animation of objects. We're watching in very different ways. I was just watching it move. It was one of the most magical things you can do is the animation of an inanimate object. And I was just watching it that way. But Teller was watching it uh, technically and telling me afterwards um, some of the amazing innovations you made as a lot of the stuff that you uh, you created for this, right? A lot of stuff is original to you. Yeah. And one of the things you're doing in this routine that's so brilliant is you're accomplishing this stuff in many different ways, which is one of the most important things to do in magic so that one method cancels out the other and cancels out the other. And I'll tell you, uh, we just love the routine. Tell her drew all sorts of stuff and kind of took me to school on this, but... Um, I, um, I uh, don't think you fooled Teller, but I think the audience will tell us that you sure fooled them and they loved it. <laughs> Didn't you? Did you guys love it? They loved you, I loved you, Teller loved you, everybody loved you, but I don't think you fooled us. Thank you. Thank you. Do you believe Penn? Do you think they figured it out? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Yeah. 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 He's a master. <laughs> Give him another warm round of applause. <laughs> Bruno thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck to you. Penn and Teller time. See the Las Vegas legends perform right after this. Welcome back, everyone. If there's anyone who knows about the word random, well, it's Penn. It's literally the title of his latest book. Joined by my very own daughter, Sierra, who has no idea what's about to happen. Here's a very random trick by Penn and Teller. Hey, Sierra, uh, you know, uh, the word random is really important in life and really important in magic tricks, and it's uh, really hard to generate random. And this trick kind of demonstrates how difficult it is to, for a human being to generate random. Now, we want for this trick, the most important thing is that we start with a random card. Joe's going to riffle down the deck at random, and you just say, stop at random. Uh, stop. Okay, that's the random card you pick. What card is that? Three of clubs. The three of clubs, okay? So you pick the three of clubs at random out of the deck. We don't want to just stick you with that. We want to give you a possibility of choosing another one. So Phil's going to just slide the cards out and just, uh, just, just grab a bunch of them there. Just grab, just slide down and grab them. Yeah, just grab right there. And that's the card you chose right there. It's the... Three of clubs. The three of clubs. So that probably wasn't random, Sierra. That's probably what's called a card force. Teller had control of it all the time. So we picked that twice. So the real way to do random probably is just for you to name a card off the top of your head. Look at me, Sierra. Name your favorite card. Six of spades. Six of spades. Now, Magicians have asked people to pick random cards for years and years and years, and they know the frequency that people will pick cards. And you pick the six of spades, and that is the 33rd most likely card to be picked. That's pretty good. We're going to give you another chance, another way to do random. See, all these cards are different here, Sierra. And all you've got to do is just fold them up, 
turn them over, shuffle them, whatever you want to do, and then just pick a random card the way you think it'd be random. There's no way we could be forcing it. We couldn't be doing anything to you. We can't be messing with you at all. Totally clean. Just pick okay. any card you like there, Sierra. What'd you pick? The King of Diamonds. Now, this is a weird one, because the King of Diamonds is the 22nd most likely card to be picked, the 22nd. You want to pick another one like that? You want to just go in there like that? We're going to give you a few choices here. We're trying to get a random card, here. That's all we're trying to do without messing with. Which card to get there? The Ten of Hearts. The Ten of Hearts. So the Ten of Hearts is the... 11th most likely card to be picked. So now we get four cards there, and now we're going to let you choose three of clubs, which is obviously four, you picked that twice, six of spades, which came off the top of your head just looking at me. Maybe I infected you, maybe I didn't, we don't know. The king of diamonds, you reached in, you shuffled around, we weren't touching anything, or the ten of hearts, which did the same way. Which one of those would you like? Um, the six of spades. Are you sure? You pause it. That's when they come off the top of your head. Six, you really think you can generate random like that? You really think you can? You really think the six of spades is the one you chose? You feel that's random? <laughs> You're kind of trying to screw us up here, Sierra. So try. The six of spades, is that the one you think? Six of spades. By trying to get you to change your mind? You think I am? A little bit. A little bit? You want to stay with the six of spades? Last chance. Six of spades. That's what we're going to choose right there, the six of spades. But now it gets even harder, because now you are going to try to pick a random number. A number between one and six. He tell us dealing this into six piles here, and you're going to name a number between one and six. What would you like, Sierra? Two. 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 Now, I cheated a little bit there. I said number between one and six, which I can pretend gave you six choices. But because I said the word between, I really gave you four choices. Does that change anything? You want to stay with the two? Or you want to go with the uh, one, two, three, four, five, or six? I'll stick with the two. Stick with the two. You should. You could roll the die if you feel I was affecting you. You could roll that die, see what number you get there, what number you get there. Four. Do you want to go with the two or the four? I'll go with the four. So you're going with four. Now, the other question is, four could be one of two piles. Right? If you go from the left, one, two, three, four, it's this pile here. But if you go from the right, one, two, three, four, it's this pile here. Okay? So you want to go from the left or the right? Um, let's do it from this way. So one, two, three, four. That's the pile you want? Yeah. Right there. You can still change your mind. <laughs> we'll stick with that. There's six of spades and that pile right there. You feel both of those are random. That's four from this side. It's three from this side, but four from this side. You could have picked any of these piles, but you chose that one. Any of these piles would have been fine. But if you ran the clock back, it would be a whole different thing. But you chose this pile right here, Sarah. And you chose this card right here. The six of spades and the fourth pile. So these cards are out. There's no way we're going to possibly hit those. Now name another number. One, two, three, four, five, or six. Or you can roll the die. What do you want, Sierra? I'll roll the die. Roll the die. Go ahead. Five. You want to go with the five or change your mind? I'll stick with the five. So you're going to go with the five, six of spades, five down in this pile that you chose from the right four. I'm going to move that over there. Watch Teller carefully because he's so sneaky. Watch him carefully. Now take the one card. Put it over there. One, two, three, four, and then five is the one. Pull that one, pull that one. Now, Sarah, if you'd picked another number, you could have had the four of diamonds, you could have picked the eight of hearts, but no, you picked that card, number five. You chose the six of spades, chose that at random, chose the fourth pile from the right, chose that at random. Five cards down, six of spades. What card you got there, Sierra? The six of spades. You are so bad at random. You're terrible at random, Sierra. You're just terrible. My daughter, Sierra, and all of tonight's terrific magicians. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.
Cadillac. So uh, they loved you. I loved you. Teller loved you. Everybody loved you. But I don't think you fooled us. Thank you. Thank you. Do you believe Penn? Do you think they figured it out? Yeah, sure. They, 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 he's a master. <laughs> Give him another warm round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck to you. Penn and Teller time. See the Las Vegas legends perform right after this. out and just uh, just just grab a bunch of them there just grab just slide down grab them. yeah just grab right there and that's the card you chose right there it's the three of clubs the three of clubs so that probably wasn't random sierra that's probably what's called a card force teller had control of it all the time so we picked that twice so the real way to do random probably is just for you to name a card off the top of your head look at me sierra name your favorite card Six of spades. Six of spades. Now, magicians have asked people to pick random cards for years and years and years, and they know the frequency that people will pick cards. And you pick the six of spades, and that is the 33rd most likely card to be picked. That's pretty good. We're going to give you another chance, another way to do random. See, all these cards are different here, Sierra. And all you've got to do is just... Fold them up, turn them over, shuffle them, whatever you want to do, and then just pick a random card the way you think it'd be random. There's no way we could be forcing it. We couldn't be doing anything to you. We can't be messing with you at all. Totally clean. Just pick okay. any card you like there, Sierra. What'd you pick? The King of Diamonds. Now, this is a weird one, because the King of Diamonds is the 22nd most likely card to be picked, the 22nd. You want to pick another one like that? You want to just go in there like that? We're going to give you a few choices here. We're trying to get a random card, Sierra. That's all we're trying to do without messing with. Which card to get there? The Ten of Hearts. The Ten of Hearts. So the Ten of Hearts is the 11th most likely card to be picked. So now we get four cards there, and now we're going to let you choose three of clubs, which is obviously four, you picked that twice, six of spades, which came off the top of your head, just looking at me, maybe I infected you, maybe I didn't, we don't know. The king of diamonds, you reached in, you shuffled around, we weren't touching anything, or the ten of hearts, which you did the same way. Which one of those would you like? Um, the six of spades. Are you sure? You're positive. That's the one that come off the top of your head. Six. You really think you can generate random like that? You really think you can? You really think the six of spades is the one you chose? You feel that's random? You're kind of trying to screw us up here, Sierra. So try. The six of spades, is that the one you think? Six of spades. By trying to get you to change your mind? You think I am? A little bit. A little bit? You want to stay with the six of spades? Last chance. Six of spades. That's what we're going to choose right there, the six of spades. But now it gets even harder because now you are going to try to pick a random number. A number between one and six. He tells us dealing this into six piles here. And you're going to name a number between one and six. What would you like, Sierra? Two. 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 Now, I cheated a little bit there. I said number between one and six, which I can pretend gave you six choices. But because I said the word between, I really gave you four choices. Does that change anything? You want to stay with the two? You want to go with the uh, one, two, three, four, five, or six? I'll stick with the two. Stick with the two. You should. Now, you could roll the die if you feel like it was affecting you. You could roll that die. See what number you get there. What number you get there? Four. Do you want to go with the two or the four? I'll go with the four. So you're going with four. Now, the other question is four could be one of two piles. 
right? If you go from the left, one, two, three, four, it's this pile here. But if you go from the right, one, two, three, four, it's this pile here, okay? So you want to go from the left or the right? Um, let's do it from this way. So one, two, three, four, that's the pile you want? Yeah. Right there, you can still change your mind. <laughs> we'll stick with that. Here's six of spades and that pile right there. You feel both of those are random. That's four from this side. It's three from this side, but four from this side. You could have picked any of these piles, but you chose that one. Any of these piles would have been fine. But if you ran the clock back, it would be a whole different thing. But you chose this pile right there. Here, Sarah, and you chose this card right here, the six of spades and the fourth pile. So these cards are out. There's no way we're gonna possibly hit those. Now name another number. One, two, three, four, five, or six, or you can roll the die. What do you want, Sierra? I'll roll the die. Roll the die, go ahead. Five, you wanna go with the five or change your mind? I'll stick with the five. You're gonna go with the five, six of spades, five down in this pile that you chose from the right four. Gonna move that over there. Watch Teller carefully, because he's so sneaky. Watch him carefully. I'll take the one card, put it over there. One, two, three, four, and then five is the one. Pull that one, pull that one. Now, Sarah, if you'd picked another number, you could have had the four of diamonds, you could have picked the eight of hearts, but no, you picked that card, number five. You chose the six of spades, chose that at random, chose the fourth pile from the right, chose that at random. Five cards down, six of spades. What card you got there, Sierra? The six of spades. You are so bad at random. You're terrible at random, Sierra. You're just terrible. my daughter Sierra and all of tonight's terrific magicians thank you for watching and we'll see you next time